beautiful. First, I'm gonna do a quick overview about this build, its weakness and strength. Then more detailed explanation, how it works, all items and passive skill tree. And after that I'm gonna talk about other possible classes and different approach to this build. You can find timestamps in video description. So let's start and maybe I'll start by telling you how this build came to life. It started as an arc build, but as you know arc is bad against single target. And since I didn't want to do a crit build, I was thinking about other ways to supplement my damage. And there is this helmet, Kitana's first, K Kitavas, Kitavas first. 30% chance to cast socketed spell when you spend at least 100 mana to use a skill. By the way, cast while channeling only counts as one cast. I also need a lot of damage and cast speed and mana. So I thought maybe I should combine Kitana and Shade, actually two shades. Shade of Solaris is only level 30, but it gives insane spell damage. Not only spell damage, but also extra hairs damage. The drawback for this weapon is that you need to crit every 4 seconds. And your critical strikes deal no damage. I mean no damage, not just no extra damage, but no damage. And it quickly became too annoying to use it. So at level 68 I switched to Pleasure of Hands. It also has nice amount of spell damage, but also gives 100% increased mana. And since I'm using mind over matter and I need at least 100 mana to cast a spell, this works perfectly. Or so I thought. Spell echo is actually bad for this build. Two casts with spell echo counts as one. So if you want to trigger spells in your helmet more often, you should not use spell echo. So finally I decided to just use Dorianus Catalyst for my weapon. It has some cast speed which I need and also elemental damage. Oh and a bit of elemental damage reaches life. Ark was still doing bad damage. So I decided to just go full ballsy. Magma balls, frost balls and lightning balls. Yep, that's definitely how these skills are called. I enjoyed it so much I even bought frost balls skill effect and I don't even like cold spells. By the way, I did not invent anything new here. This is just my take on Kitava's helmet. Also this build is not as strong as it can be. I'll talk more about this near the end of the video. Using magma orbs, lightning balls and frost bolts will only take you to red tier maps, but it will be a struggle. But it just looks so cool. Seeing all those different colors, I just love it. Do not be fooled by low amount of life. If you combine life, ES and all unreserved mana, you get nearly 9000 effective life pool. And as you know, I don't really min max my gear, so you can get even more. Now let's talk about items. I already mentioned Kitava's helmet. Another unique item for this build, Praxis Ring. I think every mind over meta build should have this ring. Remember, mana is part of your survivability. If you don't have mana, you take full damage into your life and also you can cast spells. Another useful unique is Dorianus Catalyst. As for armor, I am using Geoffrey Sanctuary, but only because I do not have any other good 6 link armor. In fact, you don't even need 6 link armor. You can get the ball rolling, I mean balls flying with only 4 link, but for that you might need 3 jewel slots. So the armor is up to you, but I suggest you to get armor with life and ES, or maybe some mana. The rest of the gears are just life and resistances. Also I found this awesome amulet. It gives me a lot of mana, cast speed, life and some attributes. By the way, I am not a fan of unique flasks, but Zerf's last breath is really amazing for this build. In dangerous situations, every cast heals you for over 800 life. Of course, as long as you have mana to cast spells. That's why I use Mana Leech. So let's talk more about skills and links. To get a bit more damage, most of my gems have quality. So, Frostbolt linked with added cold damage, control destruction, faster casting, Mana Leech and cold penetration. And I know what you're thinking, uh, Mana Leech, what? But trust me, you need Mana Leech. You can get Mana Leech on boots and enchantments, but only after killing enemies. And against single target and against bosses, it is not really great. But there are other options to get Mana Leech. For example, Barrack Grip's Ring, 1% damage reached as life against frozen enemies. But again, you won't be freezing bosses, so it's not reliable. If you really don't want to use mana leech, you can probably get away by using another mana flask. By the way, to get your mana cost above 100 mana, you can use Fevered Mind Jewel. It is cheap, it gives spell damage and also 100% increased mana cost of skills. I'm only using one of these, but you might need to use two or even three of these, until you get Sanctuary of Fort's Note. Actually at first I thought that this node would make my all skills cost no mana when on full energy shield. But it doesn't work that way and it first reduces mana cost by 50 and then another 50 from that 50. Next, gems in my helmet. 
ball lighting, magma orb, control destruction and lesser multiple projectiles. I will talk about better options a bit later on. By the way, because this is Hierophant, skills in your helmet penetrate 20% of elemental resistances. Skills in your glove have 40% increased area of effect. And in my gloves I have Orb of Storms, Increased Critical Strikes, Curse on Hit and Elemental Weakness. This is used for two things, to apply Curse and to trigger Elemental Overload. Also I am using Lightning Golem for more gas speed, Flame Dash, Clarity of course, Arctic Armor, Val Lightning Trap for more damage and Herald of Thunder. Well simply because I was using Arc from the start and my passive skill tree was built around lightning damage. It gives some damage and you cannot use stronger auras, because you should not reserve too much of your mana, but you can play around with it and see what else you can use. Maybe drop Arctic Armor and Herald of Thunder and use Discipline, but you kind of need damage. For Boost Enchantment, Regenerate 1.5 of life and mana per second if you were hit recently is highly suggested, or 2% if you can get it from Uberlab. Next Passive Skill Tree Hierophant First I pick Divine Guidance then Illuminated Devotion and then Sanctuary of Thoughts. Then just pick Elemental Damage, Spell Damage, Life, Cast Speed, Jewel Slots, Mind Over Matter, Elemental Overload, More Cast Speed, Life Mana. Moving through which area take these nodes to get Stun Avoidance, More Life and Mana, More Cast Speed. Moving to Shadow area to get More Cast Speed, Elemental Damage, Life, Another Jewel Slot and also Life and Energy Shield nodes. This is for level 85. You can either take more elemental and spell damage or get another life and energy shield wheel. Now this is not the highest damage build and you can definitely get a lot more damage from this sort of build. Well not this sort of build but from different approach. So let's talk about different ways to build around Kitawa's helmet. My first build in Legacy League was build around Mastermind of Discord and it was a failure, because back then I was using casual channeling and casual channeling does not work the way I fought with master of discord, I mean mastermind of discord, Ugh, these names. So I think this build could work with mastermind of discord. So let's say you use frost bolts, then lightning ball and magma orbs trigger and you get 25% penetration to all elements. As elementalist you would have more cast speed and damage but a lot less mana. Also you could try using elemental equilibrium. But I'm not sure if uh, skills would cycle properly to keep elemental equilibrium at full power. But if it did, you would get a lot of penetration. <coughs> Don't think that the thoughts. <coughs> right. The next approach would be, well actually instead of ball lighting and magma orb, you can use frostbolt. By the way, did I mention that I'm using frostbolt threshold jewel? Frozen trails? Yeah, I'm using one of these. So let's say you only use frostbolts. And because of this threshold jewel, you no longer need LMP or GMP. So another frostbolt setup can be socketed into helmet linked with control destruction, elemental focus and cold penetration. And this would actually do more damage than your 5 link frostbolt setup in your armor. I have tested this setup and it works well, but it is not as flashy. Let's quickly compare damage. I will use path of building to compare the damage. Also I will be using all level 20 gems with 20 quality. So with my current setup, my 6 link frost bolt does 89 total dps. This is with elemental weakness applied to enemies. Average hit is 28000. Now set up in my helmet frost bolt average hit is 39000, nearly 40000. Total dps here is misleading because it accounts for cast speed which does not matter because it is being triggered by 30% chance when casting other setup. And my main setup has like 3 casts per second, so you basically cast this once per second on average. So the combined total dps is only about 130,000. If I were to use magma orb and ball lightning, magma orb average damage would be around 60,000 and ball lightning average hit 2.7,000 only. But it hits multiple times. You can also replace ball lightning with frost bolts. Of course against bosses if you drop wall lighting trap you will do a lot more damage. Another approach would be to do a crit build. Crit build would probably do more damage, but it would be harder to balance all the other things. To have enough mana, to sustain your power charges, to get enough crit chance and get enough cast speed. Well you could probably do house inoculation build with wall pack, but then no mind over meta and you would have a lot less mana. Assassin for a lot of crit chance. Or Inquisitor to ignore enemy elemental resistances on critical strikes. 
Actually, Crit Hierophant would also work, because with Conviction of Power you get 50% chance to gain power charge if you or your totem kills an enemy, so it would be pretty easy to generate power charges and you would also end up having a lot of mana. I am seriously thinking to make a new character and make a crit build. The only problem is that I hate double chances. Chance to trigger spells and also chance to get critical strikes. And non-critical strikes would do low damage. So you kind of need to have a lot of critical strike chance. First I need to do planning on path of building and see if I can get enough critical strike chance, enough mana, enough cast speed, enough survivability. By the way, in video description you can find import code for path of building with all my current items and gems. Oh by the way, if you find a way to get frenzy charges without using blood rage, you can get a lot more damage. So that's it for this current build. All the stuff are in video description, but that's not all for this video. Tell me, are you having a bad day? If so, I would like to promote one of my older videos. It only has around 200 views, but around 50 of them are from me. I really love that video. It has good music, some epic action and is meant to be a motivational video. I put a lot of thoughts and heart in that video. So check it out. I think you will like it too. Thank you for watching and see you soon.